Well, hello everybody from downtown Toronto, Yorkville to be exact. Uh, please let me know who's all here, where you're from, what time it is where you are. Already I can see we got Kostov in here. Thank you so much for coming out. We got DW from Manitoba. We got Bob from Florida. Prasad from India. Larry, thank you so much for coming out. We got David in the house here as well. Amazing. And yeah, if you guys can, you know, see me okay, if you can hear me okay, please keep me updated as we go. Sometimes there will be issues with the stream. Unfortunately, it's kind of out of my control usually. All I can really do is try and get in a, hopefully a different area where the connection is better. So uh, yeah, just let me know if it is kind of off though. Uh, we got Giovanni from Italy. Thank you so much to Deacon. 1.30 where Kostov is. Thank you so much for staying up so late. That's very kind of you. We got Melissa here. Thank you so much for the check-in. We got Paul from Thailand. Love it. And yes, Ryan, there is a Ukrainian festival going on now. I was thinking of doing that as my live stream, but I already did a whole live stream of like Lower West Village area and it would take me a really long time to then get down here. So if you guys are interested in seeing me cover that, I already did some Instagram content earlier today on it. So uh, you can go check that out. That if you're in Toronto, it is happening kind of at Runnymede and Jane Station. So lots of uh, great Ukrainian performers, lots of delicious Ukrainian food, definitely worth checking out. Uh, right off the bat, thank you so much, Michael, for the super chat. So kind of you. Uh, hey, Alina from Sweden. How are you doing? The time here is 10 p.m. Uh, thank you so much, Michael. I am doing well, other than being a little bit sleep deprived, if I'm being honest. I don't know if you guys have ever dealt with this, but I used to, you know, for the past, past few years, be able to fall asleep like right away didn't really have any issues with my sleep schedule unless I'm like flying places but the last like three weeks I have really struggled falling asleep even when I'm really tired I don't know why so I <laughs> if I look a little weird that's maybe why I can feel like my eye twitching because I've been so sleep deprived so I'm good other than being slightly sleep deprived unfortunately uh, hello to Ralph from Brazil. We got Barry from Sydney, Australia. Amazing. We got Sajad from Iran. Very cool. Around the world from Spain. Amazing. Well, thank you guys so much for coming out. This is going to be my last Toronto live stream uh, before I head to the Maritimes uh, next week, which I'm super excited for. And my next live stream, I was thinking about it, will probably be from Fredericton in the first few days of October. Initially, I was gonna do it from Charlottetown, but I'm gonna be doing two videos from Nova Scotia, two videos from PEI, and only one video um, from New Brunswick. So I figured that, uh, you know, I may as well do a live stream from uh, New Brunswick, and that will be, yeah, early October when I am there. So stay tuned for that. But I will be back here to Toronto afterwards, and we'll probably do like, one or two more live streams of different neighborhoods here in the area as well but that'll just be later in the month um, but okay guys so let's just get straight into it we got some ground to cover I'm gonna put on my sunglasses and eyes glasses because it is super bright out today um, the areas that we are going to be visiting today are all the downtown central sort of districts and maybe you might even real recognize not realize recognize where we are right now this is the rom the royal ontario museum let me just move away from it here 
It is a stunning building. I'll flip the camera in just a sec. Probably one of the most famous museums in Canada as well, and it is definitely worth uh, checking out if you go here to Toronto. So yeah, we're gonna start in Yorkville. We're gonna go through the village where I used to live, one of my favorite areas. Uh, then of course, we're gonna go through like Dundas Square, Nathan Phillips Square. Um, I think there's still stuff going on for TIFF today. So I actually just realized that as I was on the train, because initially I was just gonna go straight to the harbor front to end off the live stream. But I think let's take a little tour of TIFF if stuff is still uh, going on this weekend. Thank you so much once again to Michael for the super chat. Um, says, I have that problem because I'm stressed out because it's so difficult to get an apartment here after the government has changed some rules, unfortunately. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Michael. That really sucks. Definitely stress can impact your sleep. That is absolutely <laughs> certain. I hope things improve and hopefully, you know, you find something that um, doesn't give you so many issues. Sorry to hear that. Um, let's see here. All right, we already got 83 people on the live stream here, guys. Amazing. So let me flip the camera. That uh, is the intersection of Queens Park or Avenue Road, because Toronto likes to switch its silly names, as I said in my last video, and Bloor Street. So we're gonna get to there in just a second, but I wanted to show you guys where I was sitting near, which is the ROM, Royal Ontario Museum. I will say that the building is just a very impressive structure it's kind of actually hard to see from here but you see how it's like slanted right but those are exhibit rooms like when you're actually inside of it uh you also get a really interesting view and they have everything there from like art to dinosaurs to i think they still have like that gold museum the gold collection it's a very like wide variety of things both canadian and international sort of exhibits and artists so even for the slightly expensive price tag i think it's like 25 dollars for an adult uh, i do think it's worth it if you've never been so just wanted to make a mention of that and speaking of museums, there's also the Gardner Museum just across the way here. I haven't been there in quite a while, but if you can kind of see, there's like this black and white striped kind of head. <laughs> That's the entrance of the Gardner Museum. It's more uh, kind of ceramics, sculptures, textiles, more of an art museum, I guess you could say. Uh, so that one also is interesting. If you're interested in that sort of thing <laughs> we are going to get started with the route of yorkville that i have planned i don't know if i mentioned it in prior videos but like all over toronto there is so much construction going on right now literally it feels like every main district uh, it's a bit of a mess, but hopefully once they're done, it will look really good. All right, here we are. So yeah, it was Queens Park, and now it magically becomes Avenue Road that goes up here. One of the many confusing streets in Toronto that have two names for whatever reason. Has anybody who's in the chat been to Toronto before or anybody who uh, lives in Toronto? Do we got any Torontonians here in the chat today? Let me know. Oh, we got Alex from Sao Paulo, welcome. Andy from the UK. We got Zach from Algeria, wow so international today guys <laughs> i guess we're international all the time <laughs> not just today but very cool to know where you're all from for those of you who haven't heard of yorkville uh, before this neighborhood is 
overall, I would say the most upscale uh, commercial neighborhood uh, in Toronto. There's lots of uh, neighborhoods where people live that are super affluent, where you have huge mansions and, you know, gated communities, but it doesn't really have the commercial aspect that Yorkville has. So this is really the place where, uh, you know, very wealthy people tend to live because it is so much more expensive for real estate here and there's a lot of uh, really upscale restaurants and shops here the streets are overall kept very nice so not everybody's uh, jam I'm sure but I personally do like coming to this area because it is really nice this is actually new I don't remember seeing this last time I was here interesting sculpture Oh. Uh, Prabhujat is from Toronto. Amazing. Thank you for letting me know. David has been to Toronto. Elias from Vancouver, but his brother lives here. Amazing. This place is new and I really want to try it. I haven't been here yet. Uh, it's supposed to have like really good like cakes and bakery kind of stuff. Really beautiful new cafe. We're going to go here on Yorkville Avenue to start off our journey. Ah. Hello to Johanna, thank you so much. We got Ricardo from the Netherlands. So cool. Ooh, bottomless brunch, $30 bottomless mimosas. I mean, in a way that's a good deal, but I think you'd have to drink at least two to three to get your money's worth, <laughs> depending on how much they are regularly. Over here we have the famous Hazelton Hotel. Lots of celebrities, especially during TIFF, which like I said is today's the last day. It's still going on right now. They tend to stay at this hotel um, and they have a really famous kind of patio restaurant that the who's who likes to go to. Aw. Thank you so much to Rahul for the super chat. You are so kind. Enjoy your Sunday in TO and have an amazing time uh, trip to the Maritimes. Thank you so much, Rahul. As always, really appreciate you coming out and thank you for your support. I am very excited to be going to the Maritimes. It's going to be a very, I think, different, you know, experience. Maybe ever so slightly similar to Saskatchewan, I think, because, you know, they don't really have big cities and it's not really uh, a fast paced sort of lifestyle. So I am really looking forward to it. So thank you so much. Uh, okay. Oh, there's a sightseeing bus. How nice. So yes, as I was saying, this is the Hazelton Hotel. They have a lovely patio all on the streets of Yorkville. You will see all the fancy like supercars, all that kind of jazz. This is the place for that. reading your comments here guys ah my mom is here Privyat. thank you so much for coming out and yes the weather is thankfully quite nice today considering there is a tropical cyclone that went through the maritimes uh this weekend thankfully i don't think it caused too much damage but unfortunately i did read that one person uh passed away because of the storm so that's very sad may they rest in peace 
Um, so I am very grateful that my trip is later on next week. Would have been a bit difficult to do my filming with that going on. Uh, so as you can see, lots of famous designer stores in this area. Really big, beautiful Chanel store. Uh, Want to show you guys a really famous ice cream place that they have here that I would highly recommend going to um, if you come to Yorkville, which is called Summers. This place has been around forever and has a crazy amount of ice cream flavors and everything's like homemade, so would highly recommend this place. Aww. Thank you so much. I'm having some weird issues, guys, with uh, Super Chats here, so please let me know if uh, I do miss one. But I see from April a super chat thank you so much for coming out as always april i hope you and your family are doing well and then also i see a super chat from harriet jim and yuki thank you so much guys for coming out as always hello alina hope you're doing well we got your postcard from toronto yesterday thank you so much well my pleasure guys glad you got it and i hope you got it in better condition than uh chris who messaged or sent me an email and said that his postcard sadly looked like it had just been through the ringer and said probably like the US Postal Service's fault, but I hope my other postcards have gotten to people in good condition because they were in good condition when I sent them. I don't know what, what they do with them after I send them off, but hope your guys' card is okay. Amazing, but yeah guys, let me know if for some reason uh, I missed a super chat because see I can't I don't see any message on April's super chat So I assume it was just um, a super sticker on there, but let me know if it's not uh, All right, so just wanted to pop in here This little enclave Where there is the famous Sophia Yorkville restaurant, but on this other side there are some beautiful murals. So if you actually wanted a cool place to, I don't know, take an Instagram shot or just something unique here in Yorkville, I really, really like what this artist did with this mural. Really beautiful. Moving on. Aw, thank you very much to Carl for coming out and thank you, Eduardo. And yes, Alex, this is a very much upper class area. <laughs> I talked about it in my prior live streams and videos, but for anybody who didn't catch what the average rents are right now in Toronto, it's about 2,500 for a one bedroom. I know, it's insane. Uh, but that also really depends on the district that you're in, right? Like it's gonna be more expensive in the fancier districts. And of course, if it's a newer building with all kinds of different amenities, that's gonna cost more. Uh, so, of course, even here in Yorkville, there's going to be a range depending on the building. But since this is prime real estate, I would estimate that the average one bedroom here probably going to be at least like 2,800 to 3,000 starting. <laughs> you know, it could easily go up to 4,000, 5,000 with a phenomenal view. But I would assume that this area is at least 10 to 20 percent more than uh, anywhere else in central areas just because this is an upscale district. I really love this street because they did a good job with these outdoor sort of patios. Really nice for the summer. And yes, Steve, for anybody wondering those uh, quotes on 
uh, real estate are in Canadian dollars. So about 30% less in American. So, you know, 2,500 Canadian would be just over $2,000 American. And of course, if we're comparing to, um, you know, New York real estate, sure, that might actually seem very reasonable. But let's be honest, as great as Toronto is, it's not anywhere is on the level of New York. Uh, so you can't really make the direct comparison, in my opinion. Uh, but sure, if you're comparing to like New York or San Francisco or something, uh, it is less expensive. But considering that the average person, from what I've read, in Toronto, who would make more than the average Canadian, makes about sixty to seventy thousand dollars a year, and that is really not that much money <laughs> to be able to afford to live on your own uh, here in Toronto. Like it would be very difficult to be approved for a one-bedroom apartment on your own, making the average amount of money that somebody in Toronto is making. So that's, you know, just the relative situation of uh, what the cost of living has done all over Canada, but especially in the major centers like Toronto and uh, Vancouver. Oh, just gonna cross the street. I see I got a super chat. So I'm just gonna get in the shade because it's a little bit difficult to uh, see everything in direct sunlight. Sec here. Thank you so much to Eric Skeins for the super chat. Here's a little help for your rent. Thanks for the video. Thank you very much, Eric. That is kindly appreciated. And yes, that will be going towards my uh, room in a basement that costs $1,700 a month here in Toronto. So thank you very much. Oh, uh, as much as I've loved my time here, guys, like I can't tell you how in a way I am so excited to start my journeys in Southeast Asia coming at you uh, in early November, just because then I will be paying what I think is a more than reasonable rate, you know, for the kind of accommodation that I'm going to get. I'll be able to not stress so much about, uh, you know, going out to eat and having to get transportation it's just been on another level here in Toronto like I'm spending way more money than uh, I anticipated so glad I'm not here year-round uh, just wanted to point out across the way here is a really famous restaurant that has been here for a very long time called Sassafras it is, you know, very good if you want to treat yourself. They do have some unique dishes and being out on their patio is always nice. So that's a Yorkville staple. We're going to go across the way here and give you a bit of a view of Cumberland Street because it's on this street that we have one of the big attractions of Yorkville, which is a big rock. <laughs> if anybody says meet me at the big rock in Yorkville, this is what they are talking about. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, Rob asks afternoon, what is the average temperature during this season? Um, so I guess early September is still technically the end of summer and Toronto does tend to have much warmer weather than I mean central Canada obviously so right now it's actually quite nice it's probably about like 20 to 22 degrees and uh, it has been like that in the last week but most likely by early October I would say it's going to start dropping down to maybe 15 degrees and start getting a little bit cooler so usually in October is when Toronto's real fall season tends to begin. Lots of nice local businesses in this area. I like that they have so many great seating areas for people. You can just relax and take in the end of the day. They have a nice water fountain. 
And this is the rock, guys. This is the famous <laughs> Yorkville rock. I don't actually know why it is here and how it is so big. I think it was just naturally found here and they just like worked around it. I've never looked if there's a plaque dedicated to it, maybe over here in village of Yorkville. Maybe it does say something. Let's take a look. Um, no, I think this is just dedicated to the guy that kind of started this community. So nothing about the rock. If anybody knows <laughs> that's from Toronto or knows the history of how this enormous rock got here, please let me know. It is pretty big. But yeah, this is Cumberland, guys. One of the main streets of Yorkville. And now, let me think, do I wanna go around? Hmm. I think let's go through the little alleyway down here, which will lead to Bloor Street. And I can give you guys a bit of a walk down the uh, main street of the area. <laughs> Thank you very much to Terry French for the American translation uh, from Celsius to Fahrenheit because I would not be able to tell you what the temperature is in Fahrenheit. The only thing that I remember knowing is that minus 40 Celsius is minus 40 Fahrenheit, AKA extremely, extremely cold. So that's the only Fahrenheit uh, calculation that I know. So thank you for sharing that for any Americans who don't know Celsius. And thank you very much to Tony for giving us a history of the rock here in Yorkville. Approximately 1 billion years old, the rock weighs 750 tons and represents the roots of an ancient mountain range. Really? I didn't know that part. That's cool. So amazing. I love it. Thank you. All right, so we're just gonna come out this way to Bloor Street, an extremely long street that runs all the way west down to Kipling Station, which is actually where you catch the airport bus if you're going out uh, all the way to Mississauga, or you go all the way east down to Kennedy Station, which is almost to Scarborough sort of area. So. This is a street that if you walked, it would probably take you, I think at least four to five hours from end to end and you would see so many different neighborhoods. So if I was ever going to do the walking live stream of all walking live streams <laughs> for five hours, I guess that would actually be a good place to do it on because I obviously wouldn't get lost or I could do it on Young Street, which I believe is the longest street in Toronto. It's even longer than Bloor Street. So that one would probably be like eight hours or something. That would be crazy. All right. So yeah, we're gonna walk down Bloor Street here, show you some other famous places. And then we're gonna walk a little bit down Young, being a major street in the city. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Ken Continuum says they trucked that rock into the city in pieces from the Canadian Shield several hours north of Toronto. Okay, that's interesting. Once again, guys, I can't verify if this stuff is real. I'm going to just take your word for it, but that does sound right uh, just because it does look like it is in pieces. So. That's interesting that, okay, it's not actually from that area directly, but was brought in. That's pretty cool. Let's give you a view of this area. We've got Brooks Brothers, Sephora. We have the really famous Canadian jeweler Burks just across the way there. Uh -huh. 
coming up here is the intersection of Bay and Bloor. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Toronto, Bay Street is kind of the financial street. You could say like further on, once it kind of gets to Dundas and Queen area and King area, uh, that's where a lot of the big banks have their headquarters. And most people who kind of work in that district tend to live in this area. I did show the ROM, Tony. I don't think you watched the beginning of my live stream. I did show the ROM. <laughs> also a really great place, Italy. A uh, pun on Italy. They have uh, a really great Italian department store of all kinds of different foods imported directly from Italy. They have some really good restaurants and cafes in there. I really like grabbing lunch in there once in a while. And then coming up straight in front, if you guys can see the pink flags, is the very famous Canadian uh, luxury department store called Holt Renfrew. Uh, I don't know how many years they have been operating in Canada, but a really long time. Uh, for the American equivalent, it's kind of similar to your Saks Fifth Avenue, which we also do have downtown, but Holtz is like the Canadian version, and personally I do really like their shopping experience, especially when they're having sales, of course. <laughs> and I would, I would say personally that I think their uh, Toronto location is their nicest location from all the ones that I've been to in Canada. The Calgary one is actually quite nice, and of course the Vancouver one too, but personally I think the uh, Toronto one is the nicest because they also just did a uh, new renovation as well. A lot of construction still happening in this area which to be honest is good because Toronto is definitely having a uh, housing crisis so the more housing they can build the better but of course these units will be luxury units they won't likely be affordable everyday average person sort of units which is really what Toronto needs more than anything Actually, I have a question for all you guys in the comments today. Where are you from, like the city, or if you live in a small town or a farm, whatever, uh, if there is an average rent, what is the average rent in the place that you live? Let me know in the comments, I'm very curious. Uh, Rob asks, in your opinion, would Toronto have the best transit system in terms of available arrival and, uh, arrival and leaving times, prices, and accessibility? Good question. Um, well, it's definitely not the best. I mean, if we're comparing worldwide, it's not even remotely close to being the best. Tokyo, in my opinion, is the best. There's no competition considering it is the biggest city in the world, first of all. And second of all, I've just never seen such an extensive uh, transportation system with, you know, thousands, thousands of stops just in the city center and then the metro area, I mean, double that. How many different train lines, constant service, and usually, honestly, very few delays considering how many issues they potentially could have. So. Tokyo is tops, but Toronto, I think is pretty good. Of course, there's things that I feel they could do better. And just in, you know, the month and a half that I've been here, like my God, I think it's been four or five times that just my luck, not that I even take the TTC that much, there was some kind of 
issue and almost always on the Bloor line. Never seems to be the Young line for some reason. It's always the Bloor line, which they shut down like a good chunk of the subway and you know it's gonna be a while before they get shuttle buses. So, you know, just in the little time that I've been here, there's been so many issues, but on a whole, it's not bad. It's by far the best that Canada has, if I'm being frank. And when it is working great, like, it's awesome. Overall, the arrival times come maybe every five minutes. It travels fairly fast, especially if you're traveling by subway. It's a whole other thing with buses and uh, streetcars because it is dependent on the other traffic. But uh, the metro is quite good in Toronto. So if I had to give it a, if I had to give it a score out of 10, seven, seven room for improvement for sure uh okay so i think some people had commented uh on rent so just to give you guys a little window of other places so aiden just moved to moose jaw oh my goodness that is awesome one of my favorite cities in saskatchewan that's awesome average rent here is six to eight hundred for a one bedroom exactly what it should be see that is a good and reasonable rent like six to eight hundred dollars is exactly what i feel it should be in canada for a one bedroom so at least somewhere in canada you can still get that kind of rate uh jen says in berlin germany uh i assume you're talking about apartments here says eight to a thousand dollars canadian i mean that's very reasonable as well for berlin being such a big famous city that's if that's accurate and that's what you're talking about that's a great rate uh terry french says average rent in montreal is roughly 1500 for a one bedroom so i mean better obviously than toronto but still a bit high in my opinion uh steve g says raleigh i don't know where that is where is that steve or north Car carolina right uh says 1100 us for one bedroom 1500 for two bedroom so for any canadians that'd be like yeah 1500 for a one bedroom so i mean okay i guess um port townstead washington david says an apartment for a one bedroom is 2000 us that's getting up there that would be like on par with here that'd be like 2500 for a one bedroom um Kostov says 500 usd for a three bedroom Kostov, where are you living that's a very good deal <laughs> that's a fantastic deal uh boston ali says can be three thousand for rent that sounds terrible <laughs> i'm sorry that's so expensive in us oh uh michael thank you so much for the super chat uh says i live two hours from stockholm and the average rent is between 1000 to 1500 for a one bedroom i assume michael you mean in usd and if so i mean i guess that's pretty like reasonable would it be because i know like sweden's a fairly expensive country but i guess two hours from stockholm it's not exactly city center so that i guess yeah could be enough uh, thank you so much for the super chat, Michael. Very kind of you. Um, amazing. Okay, guys, thank you so much for sharing. See, that was very interesting. Sometimes you just don't know, right, what uh, places cost overseas. Alex says uh, in Sao Paulo, 655 in city center. That's, you know, pretty nice, but obviously for the average person, because, you know, wages obviously will range from place to place. That could also be a lot depending on the average wage. But obviously for a Canadian wage, that would be very low. Um, Harriet, Jim and Yuki, thank you once again for the super chat. Uh, and they say we live in Richmond, VA. Actually, don't know which state that is. VA, Virginia, Virginia. I think I'm tell me if I'm wrong my my US knowledge I'm sorry isn't great um, in a home the average rent is 1850 in US dollars mm -hmm. uh, two bedroom okay in a two bedroom I guess that's not too bad but still definitely enough Ellie says Monterey Mexico six to eight hundred yeah crazy 
thank you guys so much for sharing. That was fun. I enjoyed that. <laughs> um, but let's continue on here. So we are at the intersection, probably one of the most famous intersections in Toronto, which is Bloor and Young. Here is the longest street in Canada and somebody wrote the longest street in the world. I can't uh, confirm that off the top of my head, but if it is, that's pretty wild that Toronto is home to the longest street in the world. Pretty cool. Give you guys a view of this crazy condo building right in the center. And we're gonna hurry on across the street here. Nordstrom Rack used to be here and took up a good two floors, but they have left Canada, unfortunately. Oh, Tony says it used to be the longest street in the world. So what's the longest street in the world now, if anybody knows or has Google available right now? So this is the street that will lead down to Dundas Square, which is kind of the tourist mecca of the city. We will get down there later on in the live stream, but I'm not going to go directly there. But if you were, you know, walking around on your own and just wanted like an easy sort of walk, first time to Toronto, just go down Bloor Street until you hit Young Street and then just go south on Young Street. <laughs> that would be an easy walk for you if uh, you're a little bit intimidated by coming to Toronto and aren't super familiar with Google Maps. Uh, we got the one of the most famous strip clubs in Toronto <laughs> right on our left here. This is the Upper Brass Rail. <laughs> many attractions of Toronto for you guys there's a lot of great restaurants down on this street we got shoppers drug mart I feel like there's like thousands of locations now of them all over the city the amount of money they must make every year is just sick So David says that Google says that Young Street is still the longest. Okay, that's interesting. Maybe it still is. Huh. Just reading your comments here, guys, as we wait for the light. Oh yeah, Michael says I miss Hudson's Bay being at Young and Bloor. I don't know when they got rid of that. That must, because they were there when I first moved to Toronto too. But now, yeah, they're no longer there. So that must have been just in the last few years that uh, they got rid of HBC at Young and Bloor. Aw. Thank you very much for the very kind super chat, super chat, Rob. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Uh, would you say uh, bicycle friendly? I assume you're talking about Toronto. And overall, yes. Overall, I would say it is quite bike friendly. I used to bike as my main form of uh, transportation in Toronto and definitely, you know, saved so much money by doing that because I was actually able to sell my bike when I left Toronto and more or less got my money back other than maybe like $150 because I kept it in such good condition and the person I sold it to was willing to pay my price. So uh, yeah, biking overall is 
fine in Toronto because on uh, some of the major streets like Bloor, they do have bike lanes. And personally, I would really recommend trying to stick to those streets because even like here on Young Street, which doesn't have bike lanes, it's a little bit trickier because you're really working, you know, with the traffic and are considered a vehicle basically. And some Toronto drivers, you know, can be a little crazy. So I would say that, uh, you know, stick to the bike lane streets, wear a helmet ideally, and uh, just take it slow because then you can really watch what everybody is doing. But overall it's good and I would say it's probably one of the more bike friendly places in Canada. So. That would be my take on that. So thank you so much, Rob, for the super chat. Hope you're doing great. Uh, let me flip this thing here. Oh, thank you very much, Max. I'm happy to hear that. Johnny, I have not returned home for good. I am just visiting, <laughs> just visiting Toronto. Thank you so much to Steve Mack for the super chat. Thank you for the very cute super sticker. I hope you're doing great, Steve. Thank you. You guys are very kind. And like I said, all of this money will be going towards paying for my ridiculous rent to be in this city. So thank you so much. Oh God. I hate when people rev their engines like motorcycle, car, whatever. It's put such a bad taste in my mouth. Catalin, please stop spamming the chat with your question about uh, Bucharest. I have no idea how it compares in size uh, to Toronto. Um, maybe Google that, I'm not quite sure. Um, Okay, guys, let's flip the screen here. We got a Mervish Theater down here. One of a few Mervish Theaters in Toronto where they put on different plays usually. Uh, that is where I want to take you guys later on in the live stream, which is the theater district where uh, TIFF is happening, but there are a few other theaters throughout the city in different neighborhoods. This part of Young Street, I actually used to spend a lot of time in uh, because where I lived for the majority of my time in Toronto was right in these streets. Uh, I used to live in that apartment building right there when I first officially uh, moved you know, to <laughs> a normal living location in Toronto with uh, my ex at the time. We lived right in that building and had a one bedroom apartment for only $1,500 a month. It was beautiful, had a phenomenal view, like you can't get those kind of prices now, so let's let's not even talk about that. But then the next place that I lived, which I've shown many times in videos, was at Jarvis and Wellesley, maybe like three blocks from here. And that's where I had my studio apartment for like four or five years and was paying basically less than $1,000 a month for the majority of the time. So <laughs> I used to spend a lot of time in this neighborhood and it was great because I actually went to this Hone Fitness, which back in the day was like a gym membership for like 10 to $20 a month. You know, you had Rabas, uh, there was, what's the Save On Foods or whatever grocery store down there that I would usually do my grocery shopping. And there was just so many great restaurants in this area that were, fairly reasonably priced as well and just such a central location that I really enjoyed living here like this was definitely um, such a wonderful area to live in for the years that I was in Toronto honestly couldn't ask for better And what's nice to see is that some of the businesses that uh, were here when I was living here are still around. Mazar, which is like Lebanese food, that was here when I lived here. 
I am yoga. I used to go to them for yoga classes on the second floor. Also a really nice business. Um, since Sotse Ramen is still here, fantastic. Uh, very authentic Japanese ramen place. Brownstone Bistro is gone, I believe. That was a restaurant that we had a lot of good memories in. Usually we'd go there for like kind of a special night out. I took my dad there a few times. I think that restaurant is gone now. It was right at the corner of Gloucester and Young. Let's actually take a look at what it is now. Oh, maybe it's actually empty. I don't think there's anything in here. Yeah, it's for lease. So this used to be, uh, or I guess I should say this is where Brownstone Bistro used to be, but now there's nothing. Oh, that's a shame. I mean, I imagine the rents in this area would be crazy high. So if you're a business that wants to set up shop here, I imagine you'd have to have a lot of capital to get started. Yeah, or maybe they're revitalizing this. Maybe actually you can't uh, build here just yet. I'm not sure. Hmm. But yeah, guys, this was my first official apartment. I emphasize on first official because uh, I lived yeah in that hostel when we first moved Toronto and it was only once we got all our paperwork and got jobs in Toronto that we could even apply to live in a building like this, which is unfortunate. Hmm. Just read in your comments here, guys. Um, interesting comment made by, uh, where is it here? can't it's a username in another language but it's the comment that says I wonder who are all these people in Toronto who can afford three thousand dollar plus rent if you have that type of income wouldn't they buy a property great question but uh, no <laughs> no because the mortgage rates here are absolutely insane now like the average uh, interest rate right now is I think what six and a half percent obviously depends on your um, credit score and which mortgage lender you go with unless you're obviously thinking that you know people are buying places outright if they have that kind of money okay that's another story but if you have to take out a mortgage the average rent is probably i mean the average interest interest rate is going to be like six percent and when the average one bedroom condo in toronto is going to sell for six hundred seven hundred thousand dollars your monthly mortgage is going to be way over three thousand dollars and then you have the added cost of the condo fees, the maintenance fees, which I think for an average one bedroom right now are like five or six hundred dollars. So no, <laughs> three thousand dollars actually is not enough money here in Toronto for a mortgage. So you need to have a lot more money than that to be able to buy into the market at this point in time. Uh, thank you so much once again to Michael for the super chat. Uh, Michael says, unfortunately, the average rent for me is too expensive because I live on benefits and get 90 to 95% of my rent from the government. Oh, yeah, that would be very challenging. I think... One sec, guys. There's somebody, I think, who's not quite well um, just behind me. So I'm just going to walk as I answer this. Um, yeah, I think it's especially difficult if you're on disability and trying to pay the kind of prices of, you know, even smaller places, not even big cities. I'm sure it would be very difficult. So I'm sorry to hear that you're going through that. Um, Multicorker says, hey, Alina, let me know if you're in the North York Mel Lastman Square area. I'll treat you for some Korean barbecue or Japanese barbecue. Yum. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. 
Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be up there this trip, but uh, yeah, maybe in the future, uh, that would be lovely. So thank you so much. Uh, Michael did another super chat here. Thank you once again. And with the chimes, with the chimes the government have that I only get up to $650 in rent and that's the new rule for everywhere in Sweden before that is dependent on where you lived in Sweden. Oh, so the price you got used to be dependent on the area that you lived? Is that what you mean? Like it would increase if let's say you were in Stockholm? I mean, that would make sense if they used to do that. So sad that it's not that way anymore. Um, <laughs> I think I answered everybody's super chat here guys let me know if for some reason I didn't but thank you all so much that's very kind of you um, I just wanted to give you a view here of Young and Wellesley intersection which was my main intersection <laughs> when I lived uh, by myself in Toronto I would usually, if I was walking, I'd walk down Church Street or Young Street, and then just around the corner here is the metro station, Wellesley subway station. We're just gonna walk down here. Oh, actually, one thing that I forgot to look at is you see this condo building right up here? This was not at all there when I was living here in Toronto. So they have actually built that pretty fast because I see people are actually living in that condo now. So that's great. Because this would be, honestly, I, I, I would still say that in my opinion, this is one of the best downtown areas to live in. Um, obviously, well, you know, if you're going to live in this area, I assume you're LGBT friendly because this is, you know, the gay district um, of the city. Um, but obviously you don't have to be LGBT to uh, live in this area. You just have to be an ally. Uh, so I personally loved living in this area and found it to be such a inclusive and fun neighborhood. When Pride is going on every June, it just completely comes alive and uh, there's just so many fun events going on. So that's one of the other benefits of living in this area. And you really are central to so many great neighborhoods. Like that's one of the reasons that I loved living here is because I'd basically be, you know, a 20 minute walk to Yorkville where we just were, a 20 minute walk to Dundas Square. Uh, I could easily walk to like um, kind of Parliament uh, Street area. I can actually forget the neighborhood name, or Cabbage Town. Cabbage Town is what I was trying to think of. So I'm fairly close to Cabbage Town out that way. So walking distance to so many different neighborhoods, which is great. One sec here, guys. I'm just reading your comments. Oh, wow. We got somebody from Bulgaria, Nikolai. Thank you so much. And we got Adrian from a fellow Torontonian. Fantastic. Love that. Yeah, Harriet, Jim, and Yuki, Costas World of Music Memory says, I think what raises rents is when you have students in a college town renting together and sharing it. Landlords take advantage. Yeah, that's very sad. And that's absolutely a problem that Toronto is having outside of some of the very shady things that they do to poor international students in Canada as a whole, the renting situation for those students right now here in Toronto, from what I've seen in the news, is just nuts. Like, there's people who are renting out just mattresses in the floor, you know, sharing rooms for students, and still charging them like five, six hundred dollars for literally just a mattress on the floor, and you're living with like seven other people. First of all, I think those kinds of apartment situations should be illegal. 
You know, you shouldn't be able to have so many people living in one place and for that amount of money. Um, but because housing is so scarce and especially affordable housing, that's unfortunately what it seems a lot of international students have had to deal with. So it's very bleak. Oh no. Johnny says Toronto rents are a horror story. Horror story. I have been broom hunting for weeks now. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, Johnny. It is pretty bad. Maybe you've already heard of it, but uh, one thing that I used to use when I was subletting my apartment uh, that can, can sometimes lead to a long-term rental that some people don't know about is uh, Sublets for Nomads. It's a Facebook group. Um, maybe you can check it out because initially before I decided to go with an Airbnb rental for a room, I was looking on there. So they tend to post stuff that's not on like Kijiji or Craigslist. So maybe that might be a good place to look as well. All right, guys, so here we are coming up to the start of the village, which, like I said, is the LGBT district. Lots of fun that happens here during Pride Week. And yeah, I used to live literally just like one block down there. So I spent a lot of time down here, went to Wine Rack, went to Hero Burgers, <laughs> went to Cruise and Tango's, which was my favorite drag bar. Let's actually walk by it. I'm pretty sure it's still uh, open. Thank God they survived COVID. So I want to go there before I leave Toronto. Oh, Pusateri's is still here, which is like a really nice kind of upscale market. That's good to see. Glad day. Uh, a book and coffee shop is still here. That's great. Fushimi is actually a really good Japanese restaurant. I would go there a lot as well. Just makes me so happy when like businesses I love are still open. <laughs> if you guys haven't noticed. <laughs> Sambucas is still here. That's good. It's a little quiet down here actually for a Sunday night. Sundays actually tend to be still quite rowdy <laughs> from when I used to live here, but today actually seems pretty chill. Lots of sexy men everywhere, as you can see. <laughs> uh, the church mouse and Firkin pub has been here a long time. Garage, also, good place to go. O'Grady's, which is kind of like an Irish pub. Um, also has really good brunch. I used to go there for that. Um, let's see here. Gonna read your comments while we wait for the light, guys. Uh, Tony asks, Distillery District is pretty nice. Have you been there lately? Uh, we actually drove past the Distillery District yesterday and it reminded me that I do want to go there before I uh, leave Toronto. So yeah, I do like the Distillery District, but I personally wouldn't live in there. It's a little bit too remote from the rest of the city, but I do like to visit. Another great thing <laughs> about the village is that there are drag brunches at uh, most of the places on the weekends. So I didn't know O'Grady's actually changed their brunch to a drag brunch. So that's even better. 
and no cover. Oh my goodness, that's awesome. Amazing. So coming up here, guys, is like I said, my favorite place to go out in the village, which is Cruise and Tangos, this fabulous blue building, uh, which is like two or three stories. Uh, have some of the best like drag performers in the city, really good, reasonably priced drinks. So if you're looking for a great uh, drag bar, I highly recommend this place. Uh, Flash, just across the way, is also fun. Bit more sexual, uh, but fun. <laughs> and then Woody's is also a fun bar to hang out in. I used to actually test my dates open-mindedness when I was living in Toronto and dating here uh, almost always like maybe on the second date or third date or something I'd be like oh hey like you know like have you ever been to you know the village and I would you know suggest we go to like a drag bar or something like that you know just to see how comfortable the guy I was on a date with you know is with his masculinity and you know being in, in an LGBT friendly community and it actually went out like super well I had a a whole bunch of guys that like really loved going to my favorite drag bar with me so then I knew that they were you know a good person that uh, I would feel comfortable with <laughs> um, here we are at the intersection of church and Alexander initially I thought I was going to turn here and keep going down Young Street but what do you guys think should we keep going down Young or do you guys want to keep going down uh, Church and then we turn at Dundas um, it's probably more to see on Young Street actually um, yeah actually I'm, I'm, I'm gonna change my plan let's go down let's go down Young Street instead I mean go down Alexander and then down Young there's not that much further down on church. Yeah, okay, Tony says Young Street is more interesting. I agree. These condos down here, I would say, I, if I had to ballpark, maybe they'd be a bit more reasonably priced than some of the newer builds happening here and would probably be rent controlled. Like same with uh, this building right here These kinds of places would probably be the buildings to look at if you're looking for a nice centrally located apartment But that is rent controlled Because I don't know if uh, you guys know this but Toronto specifically has a very strange rule where every building before that was built before 2018 is subject to rent control so when you move in there your rent can only go up you know 2.5 or 3 percent whatever the average rate is per year so you're basically locking in whatever rate you start at whereas any newer building that was built in 2018 or later is not rent controlled so what's been unfortunately happening to a lot of people that have moved into the newer buildings if they have a uh, not so nice unreasonable sort of landlord is they could have their rents jacked up by literally any figure <laughs> you know for uh, the next year's lease of course that first year they lock in that original rate but all the years after as they renew the lease the landlord could technically charge whatever they wanted like assuming they wouldn't charge way above what the average going rate is because they want to keep you know a tenant in there instead of having to get a new person but I've heard terrible horror stories where somebody had their rent go up like six or seven hundred dollars in a month for like a one bedroom apartment um, and they just don't know what to do like obviously most people couldn't afford that much of a monthly increase so if you're thinking of moving to Toronto obviously the prices are already so high but ideally I would recommend getting in to a building that has rent control meaning it was built before 
2018 so you don't have that extra stress of uh, the rents going up you know <laughs> by a, a new amount every single year and you just don't know what it's gonna be that would be my tip all right So we're just about to Young Street here. That's a new condo building too. That was not there when I lived here. So to be fair, they've actually built it quite quickly considering how big it is. But even still, it seems to be not enough. Like just so many people are moving here that I don't think uh, the developers are keeping up. Aw, thank you so much to my friend, John Houston. Thank you so much for the super chat. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming out, John. Hope you are doing great and hope you've been receiving my postcards. So thank you so much. I'm gonna flip the screen here as I read your comments. Here is that other condo building that I had pointed out before at the corner of uh, Young and Wellesley. Looks pretty nice. I don't even know how many units would be in a building that big. That's at least like 40 stories, I would guess. And that, I don't know what, at least six units on every floor. So a lot, a lot of units, which is good. Toronto Seagull makes a fair point. Funny how these condos go up so quickly, yet public transit projects take decades to complete. Ahem, Eglinton Crosstown. Oh my god. I completely agree and don't understand. As I was showing in the beginning of the live stream, just how much construction there is everywhere in the city. And, you know, it's, it's been here already a month and a half that I've been here. God knows how much longer these streets are just going to be closed, sitting there with, honestly, during the week, very few people actually doing anything at these construction sites. I genuinely don't understand why they don't just do them like a couple at a time, you know, <laughs> just do a couple uh, construction projects at a time finish them quickly and then move on to other places so you don't have a good half of the city closed down and traffic also affected uh, by everything just sitting empty the majority of the time. Like, doesn't that make sense? Is there something I'm missing? I don't know. Uh, a big hello to Jim Ross. At last I'm here. Thank you so much, Jim, for coming out and for making time. I know you're a busy man. And thank you so much, Jim, for the very generous super chat, uh, super chat, PayPal that you sent me before the live stream. That's very kind of you. Thank you so much. Hope you're doing great. Uh, okay, guys, I'm gonna flip here because we are coming up to the intersection of Young and once again, a two named street college which goes this way and Carlton which goes that way literally another very stupid Toronto thing where they can't seem to agree on one name for a street so they just want to confuse everybody by giving it two names depending on which part of the street you're on very very silly to me that would be akin to being like, you know, my name is Alina, but, af but after 5 p.m., I'm Sarah. So if you call me Alina after 5 p.m., like I'm not just, I'm not gonna answer, that's not my name. What, what part of that makes sense? Please explain to me why Toronto feels the need to call the same street. It's not like, you know, it cuts, you know, by a little, so many people. Um, you know, it, it slightly shifts and it is like a separate street. No, it's the same damn street. Call it one freaking name. Stop doing stupid things that serve no purpose. 
Okay, rant over. <laughs> um, more condo fun facts. This is the Aura building, which used to be, maybe it still is, the tallest residential building in all of North America. It has like 60 some floors. I'm sure the view from the top is amazing. And uh, yeah, it's right here at uh, basically Young and College, or actually what's the street just down here? I can't remember. Young and, gosh, my memory's really going. <laughs> I can't remember which street it is down here, but anyways, this is the Aura building. It used to have Madonna's gym in it back when Madonna was like trying to put out a chain of gyms. I went to her gym, but it is now gone. Oh, Gerard, yes, Young and Gerard, that's the name of the street. And yes, Michael, they do now have an Ikea here, which is actually pretty cool. I first saw these like downtown Ikeas in Tokyo and was flabbergasted that, oh my God, they put an Ikea in like a downtown area instead of, you know, a suburb as they usually do it. And yeah, now Young and Gerard has its own Ikea, which is brilliant. I love that. I love Ikea. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jim Ross. Much appreciated. Just reading your comments here, guys. Uh, Tony asks, "How much you don't? How come you don't do much U.S. travel?" Well, primarily because it's expensive, Tony. Uh, even in Canada, you know, I, I do some traveling around, but it's usually just for like a week <laughs> and I try and get it sponsored as well because it is just so expensive to travel around Canada and the US, you know, I'm obviously paying for um, all of the content that I do out of the money that I make with AdSense from these live streams, from my Patreon, um, you know, and I have a budget for that. I can't really go above that. So unfortunately the US is a little bit too expensive at this point in time for like long-term sort of traveling, but maybe, I mean, maybe next year I would do a quick trip to the US after I get back from Southeast Asia. My mom actually has a dream of going to New York sometime, so I would love to take her there. So maybe I do like a week there, but as far as like doing a road trip across the US or something, uh, my channel will need to make quite a bit more money <laughs> before that is possible. Alright guys, I'm go across the street here, more developments that are going to be built at Young and Gerard. I can't believe we've actually been going for almost an hour and a half already. This live stream has felt like it's gone by super quickly but I still have so much that I want to show you guys. So I'm hoping that my battery will last. This time I did remember my battery pack, which is a very great improvement. <laughs> so I will be able to charge my phone after I'm done, but it's a little bit tricky to charge my phone as I'm walking on the gimbal. So I'm hoping I'll have enough battery to get all the way down to TIFF and the harbor front because those are great areas that I want to show you guys as well. Actually, one thing that uh, I just realized we're coming up to is a pretty prominent 
uh, well, I think it's a university, it's, it's, it's a college at least, um, what used to be Ryerson University, but I realized uh, just last week when I was there, is not called Ryerson University anymore. I believe it's called like TUM or TM, TMU, sorry, TMU, I think it's called, Toronto Metropolitan University, something like that. We'll, we'll see once we get there. And I was so confused when I saw that because I was like, why would, why would they, you know, change the name? And then uh, lots of people messaged me online that I guess just last year, or the year before, there was huge protests, and I guess by the student body, that they named Ryerson after a person. That I didn't know. Um, and I guess this person had like a supposed history with like, you know, slavery or like racism or something. I didn't look into the details, but they renamed it because of that fact. So I was just, yeah, so confused at first because I was like, wasn't this Ryerson University? But now it is, yeah, TMU, Toronto Metropolitan University. So I don't really care like either way. I mean, whatever the people and especially the students want, but that's kind of interesting that, you know, with the times that we are living in, uh, names actually do really matter to people. So interesting. Thank you so much for the super chat, Michael, as always. When are you coming to Sweden, Alina? Well, Michael, I would love that, but I believe the Nordic countries are even more expensive than the US, so probably not for a while, unless I get like some kind of sponsorships and maybe like if it's a shorter trip. If I got, you know, like my hotels sponsored and I live off of, you know, sandwiches for a week, I, I could make that work, but if I gotta cover, you know, all my own stuff, I'm sorry, like it's just, it's too expensive for, uh, my channel at this point in time. So hopefully my channel will continue to grow Maybe it'll make millions of dollars every year and then I can travel to all the countries in the world and make lots of content because I do want to go there It does look beautiful uh, Thank you so much to Harriet, Jim and Yuki for the super chat uh, Costas world of music and memories uh, if money is no object what are the top 10 cities you would visit in the US Harry Jim and Yuki gosh okay good question well I've been to New York twice which I loved I do think that like New York is an amazing city it's a bit of a rough city let's be honest uh, but it's amazing there's nowhere else in the world like New York so because I haven't done extensive stuff on YouTube um, for New York obviously New York would be on there I've heard Boston is really nice. Uh, Chicago, I've heard mixed things about. You know, Chicago is a very famous city, but um, you know, it, it, it is supposed to have some issues as well. But I think Chicago would be on there as well. Um, there was one, uh, Charleston. I've heard Charleston is really beautiful in the South. I'd love to go there never been to Miami so I mean that would be interesting never been to LA I've never been to LA uh, so even though I don't I have a feeling I don't think I'd like LA if I'm being frank but of course like LA is a place you got to visit so Los Angeles um, where else Portland supposed to be nice I'm just naming major cities, I know. I don't know all the cities in the US, but definitely I want to see like a lot of the major ones. Obviously I got to visit like Washington DC. So that's eight, two more off the top of my head. Um, oh, Austin, I really want to go to Austin, Texas. That seems like a really cool city. Texas in general, I'd really like to see Texas. Um, I'd like to go for like the barbecue and like, you know, the country music kind of scene. I think that would be, you know, a very Southern sort of experience, which would be fun. Um, and Nashville, let's just put Nashville on there. Yeah. So that's 10, that's my 10 cities. I'm sure there's plenty of others that I would love as well. Um, but I'm just going to put those as my top 10 for now. So thank you guys so much. And yes, that is 
Jolly Bee MT. <laughs> that is a Filipino fast food place that I first tried when I was in Manila. Super, super good. Uh, and Tony and Johanna asking about San Francisco. Well, you know, I would visit it again, but I did see it when I was a kid. So I have technically been there and I did love it, especially, you know, San Francisco, basically 20 years ago, it was amazing. But correct me if I'm wrong, San Francisco is having some serious issues right now and really is not the safest or nicest city to visit. Like, is that correct? Anybody who's from there who has been there recently? Because just the videos that I've seen online lately of San Francisco, it looks scary, like really scary. So I'm not sure that it would be at the top of my list at this point in time. Yeah, see, my mom actually writes that you forgot about San Francisco. We were there in 1998. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it, you know, as a kid. And at that time, I think San Francisco was still in this sort of like glory area where it is truly, you know, at that point, one of the most big, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. But I think a lot has changed since that time. So I'm not quite sure I would want to go there right now. I hope it will get back to its former glory and then absolutely I would love to visit. And here we are guys. We are arriving to Young and Dundas. Dundas Square. Truly the tourist mecca of Toronto. And I'll be, you know, <laughs> I'll be honest and say that when I first moved here, I did think that this area was like the best. I thought it was so cool and really loved coming down here. So I will not shame anybody for, you know, thinking the most popular tourist area is so great because I thought it was so great when I first moved here. But obviously, the longer that you're in Toronto, you almost avoid Young and Dundas Square like the plague. So things change as you uh, spend time in Toronto, that's for sure. This is like our mini Times Square, as New York has theirs. And I guess you could also call it a very mini Shibuya, right? A very mini Shibuya Square where people cross the street all at the same time. You got people yelling about Jesus over there you got some kind of other preacher on the microphone over there you got free books on Islam you got everything <laughs> oh I love it man <laughs> As you can see, so much going on. <laughs> it's always interesting here in Young and Dundas Square, that's for sure. They did do a good job with it though. Like I think every city should have this sort of like light entertainment district with, you know, lots of things going on, a big crosswalk, lots of shopping good meeting place like you know they do have some seating over there and usually if they have any kind of events they'll usually uh, put it up over there and then just across the street here where we're standing is one of the most famous malls in Toronto which is the Eaton Center so pretty nice mall right downtown they finally have a Uniqlo the Japanese Uniqlo absolutely love shopping there the Dundas TTC station is right here. And then you can also take a streetcar on uh, Dundas Street, which will take you all the way to Chinatown and Kensington Market area. Oh boy. Oh no. Okay, and so there's people fighting right there. All right. 
Um, then yeah, you can go all the way out on Dundas East as well, which will not get you straight to the beaches, but close. All right. The issue about this area is that sometimes there is a lot of people who are a bit unstable in this area, so I don't particularly like to spend a lot of time here. Let's keep heading south. <laughs> yes, Terry, the crossroads of Toronto where all the weirdos uh, meet. Unfortunately, yes. Okay, this guy's dancing here. Jesus. My God, there are so many people that don't look well here. It is just sad. Aww. Thank you so much to my friend Shigeru. Haven't seen you on here in a while. Thank you for coming out, Shigeru. Hello, beautiful. I am glad you are doing well. By the way, Hawaii is my favorite state. Well, you have just reminded me that yes, that should definitely be on my list as well. I would love to see Hawaii sometime. Obviously not right now when all the devastating fires have taken place there and they need, you know, that time to rebuild and just mourn everything that happened. But I would love to visit Hawaii sometime soon. So thank you so much, Shigeru, for coming out. Thank you for the super chat. Hope you are doing fantastic have to go back to Tokyo sometime soon. Uh, let me flip the camera here. <laughs> Alex says you should carry pepper spray with you just in case. <laughs> well, let me show you guys something. So if you saw my first video uh, in Toronto when I said I am going to go to uh, Canadian Tire or whatever and pick up dog spray because pepper spray is technically illegal in Canada but you can technically carry like bear spray or dog spray. Obviously I will not be using it unless I am in a sort of dangerous violent situation but I ended up uh, getting this on Amazon, only $20, it is uh, dog spray, I guess, which sure, like if a dog attacks me too, I guess that's good to have, but um, this is 100% something that I think everybody should carry around in any big city. Toronto is by no means, you know, the most dangerous city in North America, not even close, but uh, just with, you know, the unfortunate, uh, uptick in crime that it has been having i'm like i don't need to take any chances like of course something could happen where so annoying um of course something terrible could happen where i can't get out you know my dog spray in time like it's not a guarantee that you know nothing bad will happen but i just personally feel safer if i have some kind of you know weapon of defense in case something happens or honestly in case somebody else uh, was being attacked because one thing that I also just hate when I hear about this that you know somebody got attacked on like the TTC or like some other situation and there's a whole bunch of bystanders that do nothing like what kind of society are we coming to when we don't stand up for each other and especially when there's way more of us than there is of the crazy you know violent people like we as a group should have a certain level of like street justice that's one thing that we can take from colombia because as my friend david was telling me in medellin if one of these guys you know that like mugs people commits it with too many people around those people and especially men you know and men should be standing up you know against violence happening of course more than women would just like maul that guy 
like street justice a hundred percent is like you do that kind of crap like we will take you out we don't need to call the police so personally i'm all for that i'm all for street justice to put people in their place because this kind of shit should not be happening so if i see anybody being attacked i got my dog spray and i don't care if i have to go to court to you know get a penalty for carrying a weapon or something like that is absolutely worth it to potentially you know save somebody getting hurt or saving somebody's life like our judicial system that would uh give some kind of um what's the word that would penalize somebody who's acting in self-defense or in defense of another person the fact that they would ever think of penalizing them instead of the actual offender is madness to me just absolute madness so personally you just got to do what you got to do is my opinion all right so we are still walking down young street here guys we got the elgin and winter garden theater which is a mervish theater if i'm not mistaken let me actually just stand to the side here for a sec um one sec all right doesn't look like they have any shows going on right now but once we get to king street i hope their theaters will still be going And now we're just coming up to Young and Queen intersection. There's the Queen TTC stop. And they have so much construction going on here right now, um, especially on Queen Street, because from my understanding, they're building, I guess, some kind of light rail system any torontonians correct me if i'm mistaken i believe they are going to build like uh, well i mean they all no no sorry not a light rail system because they already have the streetcar i mean an actual like metro line sorry i messed that up yeah they're actually building something underground here so i think that's why this is all like this they're building the ontario line or whatever it is so i hope that their tax dollars are at work I'm not an Ontario resident anymore, so it's not my tax dollars building this, but hopefully they are being put to good use. I want to show you guys Nathan Phillips Square real quick and the old city hall and then we will make our way to tiff i'm glad you guys agree with my strong opinion on street justice or at least most of you seem to <laughs> i'm glad because <laughs> sometimes i wonder like when people can just stand so idly by i'm just like do you not care like do you not care that you know somebody right in front of you is getting you know randomly attacked like we need to do something about this um one sec guys that is the old city hall here in toronto I'm not actually sure what they do with that building now. It is a beautiful heritage building, but I'm not sure if it's in use anymore. The new city hall is just across the street from it, so that's where we're headed. But yeah, look at this mess. Like, it, I, I don't think they're gonna be done this year, to be honest. Like this is probably still going to be here next summer if i had to guess so queen street is just perpetually closed here oh boy okay there's somebody else up here that is not well
Um, one sec, guys. Okay, all right. So, this is Queen and Bay, guys. Another main street. What is this car doing here? Did you hit a pylon, buddy? What the fuck? All right. So that's Nathan Phillips Square over there. And uh, that is Bay. This is this really leads into the financial district as I was telling you guys before. Um, I think we'll go down Queens Park though down to Tiff because that will be closer. This is also where the famous Toronto sign is that they brought in as a temporary, I guess, exhibition. I forget which festival it was that they first brought it in for, but people liked it so much that they decided to keep it as a permanent installation. So that's how the Toronto sign came to be. We've got the famous Toronto hot dog stands, the ice cream. Oh boy. Okay, that guy's not well either. Uh, let's go over here. Ooh, Mexican day is coming up here, or was. Oh, I think it already passed yesterday on Saturday, September 16th. Well, that sucks. I would have loved to come to this. Veg Fest was also down here just about a week ago. And uh, that's like the main vegan festival in Toronto. So this is our uh, spaceship um, <laughs> pseudo uh, city hall guys here in Toronto. This is where the city and government operate out of. It's okay, it's fine. I don't really know why they switched to that building instead of the heritage building, which in my opinion is much nicer. Maybe it wasn't roomy enough. I don't know. I don't know what the difference in size is between the two buildings, but that is where the new city hall is. They always have a lot of different like festivals and events going on in this area. This fountain with said famous Toronto sign uh, they actually freeze over in the winter and they have a skating rink which is lots of fun so that was a good idea whoever thought of that that wasn't initially here as far as I remember when I first moved to Toronto so that was a great idea Oh, thank you so much, out and about. Uh, the Toronto sign, uh, originally installed for the 2015 Pan American Games as a temporary attraction meant to be dismantled in November 2016. At its earliest, uh, the city of Toronto decided to continue to operate the sign after it became popular with tourists and residents. Yes, exactly. Thank you so much. I didn't know which event it was that initially brought it in, but that's how it did come in and they actually tend to change it a little bit depending on any other events that are going on in the city which is cool and the symbol that you see in front of Toronto is actually the indigenous um, sort of well not flag but you know emblem so that's cool that they added that as well 
And yeah, this is a great spot to kind of take your tourist picture of, hey, we're in Toronto, so it's a must. <laughs> it's a must. But now we are going to head to Queen's Park and make our way slightly south to King Street where hopefully they still have all the TIFF stuff going on and we'll take a little walk through TIFF. And yes, I agree, Gold Maple. The best part of Toronto, the restaurants, the diversity of food, absolutely. Toronto does have a fantastic and very diverse restaurant scene because we are such, well, not we anymore. I guess I'm, I'm not a Toronto resident anymore, uh, but Toronto is such a wonderful multicultural city. I believe it was actually named the most multicultural city in the world because I'm, I'm kind of pulling this statistic out of my memory. I think it's 50% um, of the city's residents at this point in time are from other places. So a very multicultural city where, you know, hopefully everybody can feel at home here, which I love. And they bring all their tasty food <laughs> from all the countries that they come from. So that's a benefit to everybody. Uh, out and about asks, will you be around for Newt Blanche? Good question. No, I will not. Uh, I believe that's September 26th. For those that haven't heard of Newt Blanche, it is a uh, yearly art festival that happens at night because I believe Newt Blanche in French is White Night. Um, that, yeah, it like starts at I don't know, nine o'clock, it ends at like 6 a.m. And they have all these different art installations all over the city and everybody's just running around having a good time. I've been to at least five new blanches in the time that I lived in Toronto. So it is a really fun thing to do, but I will be in the Maritimes when that is going on. So sadly, no, I will not be here this year for that. Here. Oh no, I need to talk louder because that guy's car music might freaking demonetize my live stream. I will not allow it. Hopefully, <laughs> they did not pick up that music too much. All right. This is the Canadian Opera Company, which I strangely have not been to yet. This is one of the most famous places in Toronto, but I just have not been able to take in a show here just yet. I would love to, because I, I, I'm not a really big fan of opera, but I'm a big fan of ballet. Um, but it's just very, very expensive. And, you know, when I go see beautiful ballets in like Ukraine would actually be the most popular uh, place that I've watched a lot of ballets in, but you know, I watched one in Russia as well and some other places in Europe. So it's much more budget friendly in those places and, you know, has more international performers. So it's just a lot to pay like $200 for a ticket here in Canada for a ballet show. So I haven't been to it yet, but I hear it is beautiful. And what a surprise, Queen's Park is all under construction as well. Shocking. Uh, luckily, we are going to go south to King. Uh, so many people. Oh, it looks like there is a show going on tonight. That's nice. Yeah, Canadian Opera Company. And it's the Four Seasons Center for the Performing Arts. So that is lovely. Um, let's see here. Across the way, this big building that looks like condos is actually the Shangri-La, one of the nicest hotels in the city. 
even if you can't afford to stay there a night, I would highly recommend getting a drink at their very beautiful lobby bar or they have Momofoku, I, th I think it's still around, which is an amazing Japanese restaurant. So if you're looking for a special place to have a drink or a nice meal, like Momofoku actually isn't insanely, insanely priced. So that's, in my opinion, a great place to go um, for a special night out in Toronto. Oh, actually speaking of food, I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> I had lunch pretty early today. So after I finish this live stream, I think I have to go grab some dinner right away. Um, I don't know if the lights are gonna change here really quick. Okay, no, we'll, we'll cross at the next intersection, I think. What? Oh, I'm so sad. Aiden says that Momofoku shut down a year or so ago. We would always go for summerlicious, winterlicious. Oh, that is sad. And you're right. Now I see there's something Mott 32 coming soon. I don't know what that is. Oh, that's so sad. I liked Momofoku. That was like, that was actually one of the first like fancy restaurants that I went to when I first moved to Toronto and you know it didn't really have like a lot of money then so you know to go there and be in such a beautiful restaurant I was like wow like this is so cool and they had such good ramen so I have such good memories at that restaurant that's so sad that's so sad it's gone uh, thanks for letting me know sad so sad Thank you so much, Nikolai from Bulgaria. Thank you for coming out. Seems kind of quiet down here today. I'm a little bit worried that there might not be that much going on with TIF because last weekend I was down here and um, up to Queen was just packed with people walking around, so either it's still on and it's just super low key for the last day or maybe yesterday was the last day can anybody tell me because if nothing's going on then i may as well just go all the way south to the harbor front uh, let's actually cross here wow what a big strong man he can <laughs> make his car go loud how impressive <laughs> all right <laughs> okay all right so we got adelaide street here Okay, Jim says the last day of TIFF is today. That's what I thought. So hopefully things are still going on that are worth seeing. Because usually on the weekends of TIFF, like TIFF is a 10 day event, starting with a Friday usually. So you get two weekends, um, you know, worth of TIFF stuff. And usually for the weekends, they shut down uh, that portion of King Street and put lots of, you know, different events going on on it. So I hope that, oh, already actually, I think it isn't all closed down because I just saw a car come out of King Street, unless it was a street before hand, meaning it's not just pedestrian friendly. Oh, well, let's take a look. Oh. 
We've got St. Andrew Station on the Young Line here. And we got King Street. And it does not look like much is going on because usually they would have the TIFF sign right here and the street would be closed down. And it is not. So, well, let's just take a quick look. Just see what's going on. Like, maybe it is still, you know, certain events going on and TIFF is still happening, but I don't think it's really worth walking all the way west when they don't have the street stuff around. Let's just take a look. Oh yeah, no, it's, it's definitely closed down because you got the street cars going. Oh well, that's all right. And yes, Terry French, you are correct. There's fewer people at the uh, TIFF Festival this year because uh, the states, there is the writers and actors strike going on. So the film industry in the US is basically on hiatus. So that definitely affects the Canadian market as well. So this TIFF is not as big as it usually would be. This is Roy Thompson Hall. Uh, I've actually been there for a symphony way back in the day, which was really nice. And uh, down here is where you'll find the most famous uh, theaters like the Mervish Theater, uh, Prince of Wales, or was it the Princess of Wales, Princess of Wales Theater. Um, then, Jesus Christ, is that necessary? Such aggressive drivers here, I swear. Um, then the TIFF bell box as well is also down here, which is where a lot of movies have their premieres. If you ever came out for TIFF, this is kind of the area that you would be spending a lot of time in. Would highly recommend if you're a big movie lover or just want to come out for all the glitz and glam of it all. But since not much is going on right now or so it seems i think it's best for us to head down to the waterfront because you guys we have been live streaming for almost two hours <laughs> where has the time gone it has just flown by so it's still gonna take probably i don't know what 15 minutes for me to get to the waterfront and then show you guys the waterfront so by the time i finish it's probably going to be a two and a half hour stream i think my longest here in toronto so i think it's okay it's actually okay that uh not much was going on with tiff because i think three hours is getting a little bit too long so let's just head down to the harbor front for the sunset and i think a lot of people should be down there on a Sunday evening so hopefully it'll be really nice all right well thank you very much Jim much appreciated We've got 184 people in here right now fabulous uh, I learned the other day that an annual membership for the city bikes is only like a hundred dollars or something is that correct somebody told me it was like only a hundred dollars like if you were just getting it for a day pass it's only fifteen dollars but if you get the annual pass that does have rule stipulations like you gotta you know lock the bike after you know up to 30 minutes every time but you can get an annual pass for that very reasonable amount <laughs> so instead of taking the ttc if you don't feel safe on it or it doesn't get you where you want to go that's another great option of how to get around toronto um, is to do the bike share option okay it says sidewalk closed here uh in that case it's probably better to go down what is this bay over here i think i don't know what street this is but we're gonna have to go down here Hmm. Let's see here. 
there. Just reading your comments here, guys. Hmm. Yeah, it's much quieter here today. I guess there must have been a Blue Jays game. There's a whole bunch of people in uh, Blue Jays jerseys. That's the um, baseball team for anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about. That's Toronto's baseball team. And they have their games at the Rogers Centre, uh, which is right beside the uh, CN Tower. Surprisingly, it's not that expensive to go to a Blue Jays game. Like, unless you're getting really amazing seats, you can get some okay, you know, upper register sort of seats for like 50 bucks which maybe if you don't like baseball then maybe that is a lot of money but um i feel like that's not that crazy for baseball tickets so if you're looking for something sports related in toronto that would be a good option because during the summer they play all the time for sure they play every weekend but i think they also play during the week so there's games happening all the time Uh, Ricky asks, where do the Raptors play? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it is at the Scotiabank Arena, which is just down here. It's more towards Young Street. Uh, that's also, I think that, it, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I, I actually don't know because I'm not a big sports person. Um, but I think both the basketball and hockey games are near the Scotiabank Arena, right? Does it host both of them? Because I always feel like whether it was a Raptors game or um, a Maple Leafs game, it's all in that area. But maybe there's some other arena that I'm not aware of. I'm not quite sure. Yes, yeah, Scotiabank Arena. Okay, good. Would you look at that, guys? I know something about sports. Amazing. It's good we came down this way because I'll be able to show you guys Union Station, which is perpetually under construction, as is most of Toronto. Uh, you get to see the top of the CN Tower over there, which, by the way, if you know, don't comment. But if you don't, take a guess at what it costs now to go up to the CN Tower. Like, the nicer ticket that gets you like both levels, both the main level and then that little disc up at the top. What do you think it costs? Comment down below. As I wait for you guys to guess, I'm gonna make my way down here. Oh wow, 21st century vibe starting out strong. $100 Canadian. Ricky Hamilton says 50. One of you is right, <laughs> unless it's gone up since I've uh, checked. 55, 65, 70. Well, you're both, you're all fairly close, but to me, it's absolutely obscene that the ticket is $50, like $50 to go up the CN Tower. And actually I think that's without taxes. So it's actually almost 60 with taxes to go up the freaking CN Tower, to go up the Sky Tree in Tokyo, Japan, which is the tallest freestanding tower in the world, was 20 Canadian dollars. Less than half, for in my experience, the best tower experience that I have ever had is half of the amount of the CN Tower, which isn't even as tall. Like that is ridiculous. Like why in the world is it that expensive? For what? For what? <laughs> Lots of people saying hi to my live stream. Thank you so much. Uh, we got the famous Fairmont Hotel, guys. Beautiful, historic hotel. 
here in Toronto and it is a um, Canadian chain so definitely a great place to go if you have some money to spend I'll just give you a quick view before we head all the way down to the waterfront as I said before this right across the way is Union Station this is the main railway station in the city where all the via rail trains go from where the go train and buses go from the up express which goes direct to the airport like depending on which part of the city you're in sometimes it makes more sense to take uh just the ttc for only three dollars and fifty cents uh, that's usually what I do, but if you're right downtown, it's definitely worth the extra money to just get on at Union Station on the Up Express, which goes every like 20 minutes, and it will take you direct to the airport. So that's a much better choice than like getting an Uber or something that's going to cost you like $50, $60 and probably faster with all the traffic. So that is Union Station. That is the Fairmont. That's a really cool condo building. <laughs> I like it, I like the shape. And we are gonna go back here to University Avenue. For some reason I thought this was Bay, but Bay is actually another street down. We're gonna go down University to the harbor front. Oh, so Pat75 left a very good comment. Good, you reminded me of this, is that yes, if you want to go up the CN Tower, because okay, if you've never gone up it, you know, it, it is cool to see, just overpriced in my opinion. What you can do, if you also wanted to try out their like rotating restaurant, which is called the 360 restaurant, I've never been, so I guess I can't, I can't fully speak on it because I've never been, but it is supposed to be cool. Like, of course, they're paying a very high, you're, you're paying a very high premium for the experience of having dinner on top of the CN Tower, but you get your admission ticket to go up there free if you spend, yeah, Pat said at least $75, uh, you know, uh, of your meal which you will easily spend because every main is gonna cost you like $50 a head and then you know with a drink and tax and tip you know you'll easily hit $75 a person but in a way you know you're saving the $50 that you would pay to just go up there so to be honest that's by far the best deal yeah like absolutely totally agree make a reservation for the 360 restaurant have your expensive meal experience and that way you also get the CN Tower view. So that is the best way to go about it, I agree. So this is another entrance to Union Station. Um, I guess we can walk down here instead of going inside. Sort of underpass which will lead to the harbor front. The Union Food Court is quite good. As much as I just hate it on Union. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know who that was, but thank you. Um, yeah, so as much as I just hate it on Union Station for being like so disorganized and perpetually under construction, they have built some cool stuff the food court in there is awesome so if you're looking for a place to buy a semi-cheap lunch or dinner they actually have some pretty good options down there so I will give Union Station credit for that you can check it out Did we just catch somebody vandalizing, guys? Did I just catch that on camera? The man's freaking sketching something not artistic, obviously, on the walls. Toronto police, I got it on camera. <laughs> Whoever that man was, he is vandalizing. <laughs> Should not. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's pretty sad, actually. Toronto has gotten a bit, like, subby with people 
spray painting or writing things on buildings and you know I understand the city you know they can't just per perpetually keep painting over stuff every single week it would just get expensive and people just keep doing that so I think it's on the citizens which uh, have to try and take better care of their city so it doesn't look so bad So yeah, this is Maple Leaf Square and the Scotiabank Arena. This was the place that I was talking about where the Maple Leafs play, that's the hockey team of Toronto, and then also the Toronto Raptors. I think both are in there. And uh, there's some good eatery places uh, as well. There's some famous hotels in this area start of some of the banks and then actually we get a view of the Rogers Center over there as well which is nice. The Rogers Center in my opinion is super cool because it is a uh, roof that can kind of move in and out so if it's a nice summer day they have the roof open and you know you just get the natural light but if it starts raining it's super cool that the roof can close and you know you're protected from the rain while they play baseball so that's a pretty cool feature. Oh yeah, Toronto Seagull says it used to be called the Sky Dome. Yeah, I remember that as well. What? Pat says, I love the Sky Dome too. It's funny though that it's ranked by baseball media as one of the worst stadiums for Major League Baseball. Why? It's such a nice stadium. What could be wrong with it? Or is there some issue that prevents the game from being as it should I don't know I don't know enough about baseball but that's surprising I thought it was such a nice I don't know up-to-date stadium from my experience of going there all right and yes the Scotiabank uh, arena also has concerts so that's where many of the big stars like yeah uh, out and about said uh, Celine Dion, Jennifer Lopez, Bon Jovi. They all perform at the Scotiabank Arena when they're in town. We have the famous Gardner Expressway, <laughs> which people love or they hate. Uh, definitely tends to get very backed up during... Oh, Oh no, guys, we're on 20% battery. I just got the notification, but it's okay. We're almost at the harbor front, so we'll end the live stream soon. It's actually worked out pretty well. Uh, but yeah, this is like a main expressway um, through the downtown, much faster than trying to go on like Queen Street or something. So um, I think it's great that they built something like that, you know, to make traffic. Uh, a little bit better in this part of the city. Mm -hmm. Oh really? Four dollar pizza at Longo's, you can't go wrong. Is it good pizza though? I mean cheap pizza is cheap pizza but if it don't taste good I don't want it. <laughs> I don't think I've ever tried Longo's pizza. Unfortunately, the other thing that's associated with the gardener is that um, I think this was back in the winter time is when this I don't know if it was this part of the gardener or another part but there was like a big tent city 
that was underneath the gardener and if you guys can kind of you know see like right in front unfortunately there's you know a homeless person there right now but a, oh one sec there's siren i'll just have to wait a sec to tell you guys oh okay maybe it's quiet now oh never mind Um, I was going to say that there was a really big, you know, tent city, um, you know, of homeless people that were camping out in front of the, like underneath the gardener, uh, cause it also kind of helps, you know, shield from the elements, but they basically, you know, forced all of them to move. So, uh, uh from my understanding, it's really just in the parks now where a lot of people have pitched their tents, as I've seen for myself, like in Allen Gardens and a few in Trinity Bellwoods Park. I think that's kind of the main place that these, you know, very sad tent cities have popped up in Toronto, but maybe there are some other places that I'm not aware of. So they used to be underneath the gardener and, you know, they were saying, oh, it's not safe. Obviously there's big you know, traffic issues then as well and very dangerous for the people to be there. So they had to move everybody um, from underneath the gardener, but I don't think they really gave them good options of where to go. Just reading your comments here, guys. <laughs> Toronto Seagull says, uh, $4, you can't go wrong way better than Pizza Pizza. Well, you know, I have so many friends who hate on Pizza Pizza so bad, and I agree, it's really not that good of pizza whatsoever, but it's not that bad. So if this Longos Pizza is better than Pizza Pizza, then okay, it is edible, so. Thank you for the tip, I may try it. <laughs> yeah. Johanna also makes a good comment. A picnic at the music garden is another fun thing to do in this area. Yes, definitely a good idea. All right. The harbor front actually where we're heading to oh boy like that's really helping um the harbor front in my opinion has really come a ways it's not fully done and you know there's still certain things that could be better but i feel like from the time that i first moved to toronto to now uh they've done a pretty good job at uh revitalizing the waterfront and put in a lot of uh great businesses and also you know bike lanes and walking lanes so it's actually quite nice as I'll show you guys in a minute there's also this lovely pond that they put in with like a tree in the middle pretty cool actually they have um, I guess is that still Maple Leaf Gardens Square where it has like winners Sand City Think there's some kind of um, grocery store nature's emporium in there i haven't been in in there to be honest that's fairly new to me as, as well so that's quite nice that they've built that the condo buildings that they have here are also pretty cool and very expensive i imagine but i will applaud them for the work that they've done on this area in my opinion this is one of the nicest parts of the city and really great that people can you know enjoy like ontario and just hang out with friends and family really lovely area although to live in this area year round might not actually be the best idea because in the winter um, it is much more windy 
and with the cold you know like coming off of Lake Ontario and not having as many buildings uh, for protection against the wind it gets extremely cold down here like really really cold so I don't know if this would actually be a great place to live in uh, because of how it is in the winter but during the summer it's super nice <laughs> Melissa, I would be afraid to live in that Lego looking skyline. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> My pleasure to Max. Thank you so much for coming out to the live stream. All right. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a tour of the harbor front just around this way and then I think I'm gonna have to end the live stream just because I got that 20% notification about 5-10 minutes ago so I probably only have I would estimate maybe 10-15 minutes before my battery is done I do have a charger though guys so don't worry after I'm done my live stream I will charge up my phone and get home all good Um, while we wait for the light to change, just wanted to make a mention of the fact that uh, two blocks the opposite way of where we're walking right now is where you can catch the ferry to go to Toronto Island which is one of my favorite places in the city. It's like a beautiful nature space with beaches and highly, highly, highly recommend going there if you're in Toronto in the summer, in the summer anyway. And if you're willing to pay a little bit more than the ferry, you can also take the private water taxis or like island shuttles that are also around this area. So that is something I would definitely recommend when visiting Toronto. But we're going to go around this way. This condo building would have an amazing view, like if you were out on that side <laughs> of the water. That would be so nice to have a view of Lake Ontario and the islands. Ah, we have Mulvi here, one of my fellow travel YouTubers. Thank you so much for coming out. Hope you're doing great. And thank you so much to Toronto Seagull for coming out and I will have a wonderful time in the Maritimes. Greatly looking forward to it. I hope the weather will be good is the only thing like they did just have that hurricane pass so I don't know if it takes a few days for things to kind of settle down as far as the wind and rain goes or if it dissipates fairly quickly um, but hopefully I'll have good weather when there because I technically don't have a lot of time in each place for filming so it would really be difficult if it was just pouring rain every day so keep your fingers crossed guys that we get nice sunny weather for the next couple of weeks uh, for anyone wondering like with all of these big boats uh, usually they are dinner cruises from my understanding or like party cruises you know that go around on Lake Ontario usually yeah for the weekends and the evenings uh, so if you wanted to spend a couple hours on the water that would be a lovely thing to do but here on the harbor front there's also lots of great patio restaurants i think i've been to this place before the goodman 
pub and kitchen. Uh, the most popular place though that I've been to, I don't know, at least a half dozen times is Amsterdam Brew House. A little bit further down there, that's personally my favorite place. If you can get a place on their patio, uh, that's my favorite place to uh, have a drink and like take in the beautiful views and you know the nice warm weather in the summer. That would be my top recommendation, but these ones are also quite nice, I think. <laughs> yes, Terry French, a proper booze cruise is what a lot of these places are. There's also a famous pirate ship that they have here. I think it's more for kids, but I think some corporations even uh, rent it out for their, like, I don't know, company events or something. There's like a proper pirate ship that is usually docked right here, but maybe it's out right now um, that, yeah, they have like a themed sort of boat cruise uh, if you're into that sort of thing. Jesus Christ. Jeez Louise. So many people. But look how beautiful it is, guys. Look at that view. This, this in my opinion, is one of the top things about Toronto. Like, obviously it's no Vancouver waterfront, we can't quite compete with that, but I still feel like Toronto has a really beautiful waterfront and Lake Ontario is quite big and, you know, a really beautiful lake. So as a former Torontonian, I am very, you know, proud of the waterfront here and think this is one of the great attractions of the city so if you're already going to be in the downtown area i think this is a must visit um yeah that's the pirate ship i'm almost certain yeah kajama it must be out right now is the only thing oh and as you guys can see you see that plane that's looking like it's about to crash into the water. Uh, thankfully, it's not. There is a, a little airport right here just off of Toronto Island. So it kind of goes like Toronto Islands and extends down here into Billy Bishop Airport, which is actually really cool that they have something like that. If you are going to um, one of the major cities in and around Toronto, like think more Montreal, New York, Boston, I think Chicago too, you can fly to those places with Porter Airlines, which I think it is just Porter Airlines that flies out of Billy Bishop. And you just fly directly there, like, <laughs> like right from downtown Toronto, you can take a little flight from this downtown airport. Oh no, I got the 10% warning. I don't know if you guys just heard everything I just said. Um, I'm just gonna quickly repeat myself, but basically uh, Billy Bishop Airport has flights to surrounding large cities right from downtown. Super convenient, like super convenient if uh, you know you were already staying downtown and you wanted to go to New York next, instead of taking the very long trek out to the main YYZ, uh, international airport you can just fly with porter from billy bishop so that's a huge benefit in my opinion of having that airport right downtown toronto this is new i think this is just like a summer patio that they have set up here i don't know what this is this used to be the west jet stage I don't know if it still is. It now just says Harbor Front Center, but they also have like some concerts and events here. So that's nice. And then there's my personal favorite Amsterdam Brew House just across the way. Really would recommend. Oh my goodness. I missed two super chats 
from two of my moderators. Thank you guys as always for coming out. First of all, thank you so much to Rahul. Thank you as always for all of your support. And then Jim Ross, thank you once again. So very kind of you. Uh, here is a bit to cover your dinner depending on how you can splash out. This was fun even if I was late. Thank you so much, Jim. And that is exactly what I'm gonna be doing in the next 10 minutes, I think. Uh, let me just go over here in the corner. Um, I need some dinner ASAP because it has been like eight hours probably since I last ate. And I just did a three hour trek because I had to obviously walk down here uh, before my live stream started. So I am hungry. So that is exactly what I'm gonna use your super chat for. Thank you so much, Jim. And Shigeru, thank you so much once again as well. You are so kind. Thank you for coming out to my live, uh, live stream. What do I wanna say live scream? I think I'm thinking of ice cream. That's what I'm thinking of. So thank you so much, Shigeru. Uh, thank you for the live stream, Alina. Please come to Tokyo anytime you wish. The favorable exchange rate for the Japanese yen makes it a great deal. I agree. My God, I agree. Like ever since I got back to Canada, cause I came like, you know, straight from Tokyo to Calgary. I was like, wow, Tokyo was such a good deal, you know, for being a bigger and better city i'm sorry you know than anywhere in canada it is so reasonably priced for what you get for a big city like if you compare you know i don't know even new york to tokyo tokyo is by far such a better deal right now with the exchange rate i recommend going to tokyo anytime obviously but especially right now it is a really good deal for any canadians and americans anyway with the exchange rate so you are right about that shigeru so thank you so much i will definitely uh be back i already miss it uh so yeah guys i think i think that is it that is my live stream for today here in toronto as much as i nag on it i do love this city so much i'm just very angry at how expensive it has become <laughs> when i don't think it is quite worth it compared to the competition you know that we have worldwide but it is what it is uh i will always come back it will always have a very special place in my heart and i would recommend you know coming here like maybe not so much if you are on a super tight budget because it doesn't make sense to spend a hundred dollars a night for a hostel but if you have money to burn or if you have like a free place to stay with friends a hundred percent i recommend this city it is fabulous it is canada's best in my opinion and uh i too will be back in three weeks from now because i'm gonna leave this next week go to the maritimes and then come back here for a month so uh, next time i see you guys i'm gonna be in fredericton most likely first days of october as i said so i will keep you guys updated in the community board of the exact date and time so just keep an eye out for that and my last video most likely my last video of toronto and it's a bit of a it's a bit of a controversial take on the city to close off my time here for the last month and a half uh, i will have coming out next or this coming tuesday in two days from now i'm i'm so i'm so confused of what day it is right now so I think I'm just hungry. So I'm gonna go now, guys. Really appreciate uh, all of your support. It was really fun to do this live stream with you. I hope you enjoyed it and it gave you, uh, you know, some ideas about cool neighborhoods here in the downtown core. Hope you all have a great morning, afternoon, evening, and keep being your own kind of